AM 630. It's Mornings on the Mall. That's Brian Wilson. I'm Larry O'Connor. And you know, our next guest, you can't walk through the corridors of Fox News without tripping over Greg Gutfeld. Because he's, he's a small guy and you well, can't no, see Well, no, that's right? not what I meant. Is that about you? Look I think, how you I, are you making you a height joke? No, I am not making a height joke. I'm saying he's got 17 shows there. Oh. He's on all the time. He's got Fox News with Greg Gutfeld. I thought Gutfeld. you were saying you couldn't see him, so you're always tripping no, over him. I don't know why you have to do that. He's, he's our guest, and we're Well, you we're, were the one telling him. me that he's a small I've never met him. Yesterday on Fox & Friends, they actually referred to him as Pite Size Pundit. We yeah. would never do that here. We would never do that he's here. great in stature to us. Uh, his brand new book, The Joy of Hate, How to Triumph Over Whiners in the Age of Phony <laughs> Outrage, that is uh, released now. Greg joins us now. Mr. Gutfeld, how are you this morning? I'm doing great, Larry. Good to, he- good to uh, hear your lovely voice in Washington, D.C. Hello, Brian. Hey, how you doing, Greg? Thanks. I'm hey, doing fine. I want to talk about the book, but I got to, I mean, y- your shows are somewhat subversive, I would say. Fox, uh, Red Eye uh, with Greg Gutfeld, and of course, The Five. And are you having uh, some fun with the, <laughs> the latest news cycle? You know, it, it's a weird thing. I, I, I'm conflicted because it offers some relief from kind of the dismal news cycle that we've been going through. But at the same time, it's necessary, very necessary, to have that dismal news cycle to know about what's been going on in Benghazi, uh, what's, who President Obama's been meeting with, the, you know, the, the coming health care uh, debacle. All of these things are kind of being ignored because of this glitter bomb of <laughs> salacious details, um, which are interesting. And I, and, and, and I for one, am, it, it helps Red Eye, it helps the five because it allows us to talk about stuff, but at the same time, we're avoiding some really important stuff. Yeah, and it's funny, we had Jake Tapper on earlier, and he was saying the same thing, but then we said, oh, so Jake, if you were at the press conference today, what would be your first question? And he'd say, well, I'd have to ask about Petraeus. So, I mean, even, even though you, you don't want to go yeah. there, you sort of have to. Well, you know, that I would not see. I disagree. I would, the first question for me would be, who pushed the video? And I'd say, if you've been watching Red Eye or The Five for yeah. the last six weeks, that's the only question that I've been asking who decided that was the story? And as it turns out, that will always be at the heart of this scandal, always be at the heart of this story, is why did you decide without any evidence whatsoever to blame it on a spontaneous mob? They cannot answer that question. Once that question is answered, this thing either goes away or people lose jobs. All right, so I love the title of your book, The Joy of Hate, How to Triumph Over the Whiners in the Age of Phony Outrage. Talk about the book and why you decided to write it. Well, uh, I decided to write it because it pretty much describes the experiences that I've, uh, that I've had over my life from growing up, uh, going through college, getting jobs, which is basically uh, the lie uh, behind the tolerant left in that uh, people who claim to be tolerant generally are the most intolerant, most hateful people in the world. I call them tolerotics. These are people who claim to be open-minded and accepting until they actually meet a conservative or a libertarian. They usually travel in packs which I call Tolerant Eye, uh, which are like a group of hyenas or HuffPo bloggers. <laughs> and you know about them, don't you, Greg? Yes. Um, you know, you dedicate the book to our, our late friend Andrew Breitbart, and I, I don't know what to make of, of a book called The Joy of Hate dedicated to Breitbart, because he was a lovable guy. Yeah, you know, um, he was what you call, and by the way, there, it, it, you can be uh, joyful and, uh, and... And embrace and, the hate. And, <laughs> yes. But, you know, I mean, the, the, you know, he was a happy warrior. Yeah, you know, he was a lot of fun, and we always, when we went out, we talked about politics. That was like 5% of our conversation. The rest was talking about pop culture, bad 1980s hair bands, <laughs> uh, new, wave, uh, new wave music, and punk bands from the late, you know, the, the late 80s on. Um, so we, we, were, we, were, we loved culture, and we always believed that culture was what was controlling attitudes and, uh, about politics. And you see that now, and, and, and I write about it. I have a huge, big chapter in my book on how the cool uh, uh, basically rules over the uncool and makes style more important than substance. And you see this uh, affecting poly- uh, uh, elections. Yeah, that's called the tyranny of cool. In fact, uh, people, if they want to uh, get a sample of the book, they can read that uh, excerpt. It's actually over at Breitbart News, that chapter called Tyranny of Cool, which is kind of yeah. cool. But by the way, that, that's actually fresh writing. I wrote that's a new article, so they should definitely go and buy the book. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Good call. All right, Greg. So I, I got a couple of questions because I watch you on the five. I, I have to say that you know the the hours that we work, we sometimes see you on the monitor when we come in for the right. red eye. But we're, right. we're red, red eye still 
lot yeah, when we're, we're showing we're, up we're, for work. We're sort of busy at that time. We don't really get to focus on it. But I want you on the five, and, and I have a couple of questions. Number one, how have you guys finally mastered? I sat on the set with Bob Beckel more hours than any human being, and I that uh, probably besides you guys, and yeah. I could never get the guy under control. Yet you have found the secret. How did you find that secret? Well, you know that in every green room before every show, they give you this huge platter of uh, food. It's yeah. crudite, you know, vegetables and cheese. <laughs> mm-hmm. We drug it. <laughs> there it is. And, uh, simple as that. And it's simple as that. And, and I, I don't know why uh, more uh, networks don't uh, do not do this. You know, you walk into, you walk into networks or any TV show uh, programs or whatever, it's amazing. They always have plates of sugary treats. Yeah. Talk about the worst thing. Yeah, you can give somebody. Why are you? All right, so here's my other question about the five. Yeah. Because I watch you, and, and, and of course, I have, I have nothing but love and affection for the lovely and talented Dana Perino. Right. But you guys are always at each other. I mean, not only when you get, not only on the air, but off the air. You're Twittering each other and sort of insulting each other all the time. What is it between you two? What do, you, do you actually believe there's there's something awful going on? Yeah, I, I do. I, I think that <laughs> we bought into it. Yeah, I think personally that you've got this little thing we, going we, on. We no, we just get along way too well. We're like brother and sister, so we have fun. It's that kind of thing. Wait a second. I thought you and Andy Levy were like brother and sister. Well, only when he's in drag. Oh, all right. But uh, no, you know, um, it's it's kind of like uh, we enjoy. It, we're like two kids in homeroom that continually tease each other, uh, and also we're both oh, similar in height. So well, that we is true. Found an allegiance. Yeah. <laughs> right. She's a little tiny thing. Hey, uh, yeah. Greg, uh, quickly, one thing I think a lot of people love about Red Eye uh, when they TiVo it or stay up late for it is that you sort of open, you introduce a lot of new people to the uh, to the viewers that may not. You're sort of a talent scout, frankly. You find a lot of really good people and bring them to the table. And, uh, and, and that show is a great uh, testing ground because it's a tough show to do. You have to do a full hour and be up on a lot of topics. Who is out there that we don't know about yet that you've got your eye on? A young uh, comedian or somebody who's who's not, again, somewhat subversive, not your typical uh, repeat the same liberal talking points every time on the air? Well, that's, you know, I, I think this is a really good point, especially after after the election, that it's important that the uh, uh, conservatives and libertarians look for new blood. And Red Eye's been pumping that new blood for five, six years. And and I agree with you. It's the best place to look. I you know, I, talking about my favorite guests uh, last night. Tom Shalou uh, hosted the show for me because I was doing the book stuff while I was on the panel. Tom Shalou's hilarious and smart. Uh, Gavin McInnes used to be the host of um, uh, not the host uh, created Vice Magazine. He is uh, out of control but brilliant. Um, you know, shocking guy. Uh, always probably one of the most entertaining right. guests. On, on the show. I like Michael Moynihan, and most of the people, or all the people from Reason Magazine, tend to be very charming, very smart, the Nick Gillespie's of the world, right. the Matt yeah. Welch's. Well, that's because they're all high, Gutfeld. Yeah. Come on. Hey, w- hey Greg, we got to leave it right there because <laughs> we're all Greg. out of time, but thank you so much, and good luck with the book. Thank you, guys. Uh, Buy the book.